Hi there, I'm Mike and what I have for you today is a video that I did not think I was going to be able to do this year. I finally, thanks to ToySnowman.com, got my hands on the last wave of non-plastic-free -pack uh, packaging figures uh, that we're going to get. Uh, this is a wave that a lot of people have been looking forward to. I've had it on pre-order with Dorkside Toys, who died, and then again on Entertainment Earth, um, and they had them all in stock individually, but they uh, they they weren't sending out cases, and I typically only buy just straight cases. Uh, but Toy Snowman gave me a pretty good deal on these. Cool guy, Amir, go check out that website here. There'll be a link down below if you want to check it out but I, I just feel like you know let's i just want to open them up you know i just kind of want to take a look at them give you my initial thoughts on these uh i think i'm gonna open them up on the order in which i'm expecting to like these maybe the order in which i was looking forward to them is a, a better way to put that so let's not beat around the bush really and let's get started here with of course grogu the figure that really it really shouldn't have been its own figure. I don't know really what Hasbro's thinking other than they think that we're suckers and we'll buy it. And obviously, I am. I did it. I bought it. <laughs> but uh, in my defense, I'm a completionist and this it's, it's a thing. Um, you know, I wouldn't have liked this. I wouldn't have disliked this so much, this release had it actually come with the extra head it's supposed to. And I think instead of this pram, it should have come with that dome because he's in a nice sitting position. And, and getting that dome would have really, I think, really kind of settled it for me, uh, you know, because it's even on the side of the package. It's right here. Like this this right here, Hasbro. <laughs> give us this. I don't know why you didn't give us this little Tython dome. Anyways, um, on the back, it says a mysterious alien pursued by bounty hunters on behalf of Imperial interests. That's thanks for that one sentence bio on Grogu here. I think at this point you can say more, but whatever, it's fine. Let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, I'm not expecting a lot from this. You know, looking at it out of the package, you can pretty much, you know what you're going to get here. Uh, so they, they said, Hasbro said, at, I believe it was at San Diego Comic-Con, he was going to have an extra head in in here, uh, one with his eyes closed. Now, you can if you want to. I believe uh, an eyes closed head came with one of the Grogu Mando build-up packs. I think it was the Arvala 7 one. So... If you want to, you can pop this head off and use that. I don't know if I will. Maybe, I think Landspeeder Luke made a 3D printed Tython dome that I'm, I might see if I can get <laughs> tracked down and put this off to the side uh, and, and kind of make that. And then if I, if I do that, I will probably swap the head out for that eyes closed. I mean, the head pops right off. Uh, it's not even like it's hard, although now you're you're making me look like the fool. Anyways, so this is Grogu. Um, I don't want to get too much into it. Uh, what else does he come with? Because obviously this is not really a figure. Like I bought the Grogu <laughs> when it was, what was it? What was he? Eight, eight ninety nine. Um, I bought the little Grogu and that, that felt like too much. And, and this is... 25 and that feels like way too much so anyways he comes with the pram i have to say the pram is hefty i think it's the heftiest best pram they've made so far but it's also just a pram it's got a little spot right here it's got the uh it's got that so you can put him in it um he comes with the the necklace you probably have to take uh the head off to get the necklace around his neck uh, he comes with, uh, looks like little macaroons right here. We have the little macaroons. Uh, and then he comes with the same thing the original Grogu came with. Oops, oh, so everything's so small. I don't want to take it out because I don't want to lose it. But this is everything the original Grogu came with as well. So a little cup, 
the little shifter knob, and then the little, little one-eyed frog. And I've actually done a full review on Grogu. So if you want to see that, you can. There's a little lid for this, so you know you can you can do that if you want to. Um, obviously, you can put the Grogu in. And I, I guess the nice thing about the way that he's positioned is you can get him looking more like he does in the show where he's kind of like, you know, all up in the pram like this, but it still doesn't work that well. It's like half a Grogu, but you know what? Here's the thing. Even the hot toys, <laughs> I have the hot toys Grogu with the, uh, let's see if I can get this out. Uh, I have the hot toys Grogu <laughs> that came with the pram and even that one to get it to look right there. It's a ha half a Grogu is in there. Like he's, he's melting essentially. There we go. So that just pops right out. I told myself I wasn't going to interrupt this by getting things off my shelf. Uh, so I'll probably post a picture of what the the closed eye Grogu looks like while I'm talking, uh, just to show people, you know, that, oh, get on there. Uh, there we go. So I put the necklace around him. It looks fine. Oh, I, I can't get, <laughs> that's not all the way down. Come on. Ah, that does not want to go back in. It's like I pulled his head off and now I'm being punished for it. Hasbro, was I not supposed to take his head off? How, how else are you supposed to get the little necklace around his neck? I mean, he's supposed to come with an alternate head, but that does not want to go all the way back in. I'll probably have to heat this up to get it to go back in. Anyways, that, his head actually looks, a, I think it looks a little better on camera, but not on camera, it looks worse. It looks like his neck is too long, um, but on camera, it looks okay, I guess. Anyways, let's go ahead. Let's pop that in there. Um, we're going to set these off to the side. That's Grogu. I'm not going to spend too much time on Grogu here. Uh, next, what I'm going to look at is we're going to look at Magistrate Grief, Grief Cargo. Now, you know, someone had to be second on the list. And I I, I own the first Grief Cargo. I didn't think it looked all that great, but I still bought it. Uh, I was looking forward to his Season 2 look. I think the Season 2 look looks a lot better. Uh, it's just, you know, when you compare it to all the other figures in this wave, this just happens to be... <laughs> The uh, the thing that I'm looking forward to second to the bottom. So it has nothing to do with Grief Cargo, really, and more to do with, you know, everything else that came out in the wave. I love Carl Weathers in this role. Uh, it says, once an uh, expediter of the Bounty Hunters Guild, Grief Cargo ran the trade on Navarro. Now Magistrate of Navarro, Grief is cleaning up that rough and tumble world. Good for him. Uh, I did like that episode a lot. I think it was one of the best episodes of season two uh, when they go to the Imperial, uh, you know, uh, little center, I guess. It, it, was a, it was a good episode. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, what happens with Grief in season three. Uh, has he been promoted even more? Like, this, did he get another promotion? It's weird that there's a little foot protector in here, but good for him. He deserves it. His, him and his magistrate feet. So there's not a lot going on here. You know, I, sh I should have grabbed the other grief. Hold on. I want to compare it. How much is reused? How much is original? Okay. So, uh, pants are the same, uh, pants are reused, which is fine, uh, because they're pants. And uh, who cares? You can have one pair of pants if he wants to. Obviously, so the chest is all new. The arms are reused. But the chest and torso is all new. And the head is new. And obviously, his robe is new. So that's not so bad. And I think the head, the head looks so much more like Carl Weathers. This, I don't even know who this, this kind of looks more like... <laughs> Like Neil deGrasse Tyson or something. I don't know. This doesn't look like Carl Weathers to me. But this looks like Carl Weathers to me. I think that's a much, much, much better sculpt uh, on this than this. I, I don't know. I don't know. Was, I don't know what 
who who made this, but that just does not look like Carl Weathers to me. I think this is one of the worst uh, photo reel likenesses we've had in the line. But this actually looks pretty good. Uh, I do think that the the cloak bunches up at the shoulders a little too easily. Uh, he does come with this blaster, which is different from the blasters that he came with. It, it can fit in his hand, obviously. There's a holster that it will fit into, and I'll probably just keep it in here because I feel like magistrates don't, they don't, you know, walk around with blasters in their hands all the time. So I like the gold painted on here. Um, I also like the inner robe. I feel like it comes, it looks nice from the front. There's a lot of nice molding in it. Um, we even have some paint on the back here. The rubber does like to sit up a little high, giving him kind of a hunchback look. It looks like Gru. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. He looks fine. He looks good. Uh, it just is exactly what I was expecting. You know, it's, this is not anything that's super terribly interesting, but for people that want a complete, you know, character selection, from the Mandalorian, this is a necessary figure. He's, he's part of that crew, you know? Um, he's part of the Mando crew. And I do like, there's a little opening on the side right here so he can still get his, his blaster, which I think is a neat touch. So let's put him off to the side uh, to hang out with little Grogu over there. Uh, and we're gonna get with Ayla Sakura. Now this might be something a lot of people are, are surprised at that Ayla Sakura is so down my list. Ayla Sakura was actually on my, my wish list, but I think at some point, most of these figures are. I, I, I have nothing against Ayla Sakura. It's just, when it came, comes down to it, I, I want the others a little bit more. But here we have a uh, cunning warrior and Jedi Knight during the rise of the Clone Wars. Ayla fought on many battlefields, a master of the emotional detachment necessary in the Jedi Order. She tried to pass on what she learned. Yeah, and there's not a lot going on there. It's from Attack of the Clones. This is, fun fact, this is only number three in Attack of the Clones. Of these numbered lines, like, for instance, Grief Karga was number 24 in The Mandalorian. I think, well, I think Grogu's even higher. Hold on. What's Grogu? Grogu's number 26 in The Mandalorian. Grand Inquisitor, I think, is, like, number 10? Number 9? What's what's Axe Woves? He's number 25. Okay, super curious about all these, I'm messing up. 27. So Migs is the highest so far, as, as far as I know. And then in the Clone Wars, you know, he's number 11. So we've got a lot of representation in this line of a bunch of things that we've seen in here. Uh, and yet, Ayla Sakura is number three in Attack of the Clones. With uh, the Phantom Menace, we have one. We have Jar Jar. And with Revenge of the Sith, we have none. Uh, there are no Revenge of the Sith numbered cards in there which is honestly it's a travesty like i'm not i'm not the biggest prequel lover but i like representation uh across the board uh we have we also have very little i don't want to bend this lightsaber there we go we also have very little sequel love in these numbered boxes and I know a lot of people are like oh I don't care about the sequels I do I like all of Star Wars I don't have I want to see it all so you know it's it's criminal not criminal that's a little that's, that's an exaggeration this, these are toys but it's it's a little ridiculous this line this this galaxy packaging has been going on since 2020 uh, about halfway through 2020 is when we, we got our first packages uh, and we're only just now getting our third Attack of the Clones figure. We, you know, we only have one Rise of Skywalker figure in, in this line. We don't have any The Force Awakens. We don't have any Rise of Skywalker, and we have one Phantom Menace. Like, the prequel and sequel trilogy are, are just, they're just really underrated. I'm almost a criminal again, and again, that's ridiculous. So let's take a look here. The legs are reused. I'm not entirely sure from who. I'll probably look it, look it up now that I have her in person. Uh, and, and the reason I know that is because of the double joints. All new figures have the single joint with a hinge, whereas double joints like this means it's reused from something before, like say 2020 or so, maybe 2019 is when they kind of started doing that with new molds. Uh, so these are reused. I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess maybe reused from Ayla Sakura slash uh, Holdo. 
Um, maybe Padme, but I maybe Padme. I'm going to look. Uh, I'll put it on the screen of whose legs they are. But the arm, the torso, the head, obviously all new. So new here, not new here. And then the belt is new, obviously. So um, the the face looks really good. Let's take a look. The the I like the. I mean, finally we have a Twi'lek. Well, I don't want to say finally we have a Twi'lek. That's not true because we have Hera, and we have Bib Fortuna. But we don't. Twi'lek is one of those classic OT uh, and prequel trilogy species. It's nice to have more of them in the line because for a while, like they were kind of the go-to humanoid alien. Um, the head sculpt is really nice. The paint is decent. There's a, I think there's a couple little flubs here and there, um, but those are on the back. Obviously, everything else actually looks pretty good. The sculpting is nice. She doesn't have any paint on her other than on the face. Like this is all colored plastic. There's there's no paint on the torso piece. It's a separate piece, from what I can tell. So it's it's not. This is a separate piece. I guess this has paint right here. There's some paint on here, it looks like, but there's no paint here. Um, it's all just colored plastic, which is fine. Um, but she definitely, I mean, she's better than what they did with Plo Koon and Kit Fisto, where they just took other Jedi bodies and put a new head on them and, and some new hands. And maybe when in Plo Koon's case, gave him a different cape, cloak. There we go, robe. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, this hand looks like it hinges like this which is good for a jedi you want them to hinge their hands vertically instead of horizontally because that's what gives you the proper lightsaber holding like your hands your hands have to line up when you're holding a lightsaber like this um like that so being able to twist the wrists up and down like this is good she does not have butterfly joints no maybe she does hold on she does. No, she does. She absolutely. It's really hard to tell in there. Hold on. She does. Okay. She has butterfly joints. Also, I'm not going to pull the lightsaber uh, blade off, but she does have a little spot for the hilt. This little prequel era quick release kind of thing. That looks fine. So, I mean, some, some of them don't. You know, Mace Windu didn't, and that, that bugged the crap out of me. <laughs> Honestly, let's get her in a cooler position here. Boop. <laughs> she was fine until my thumb knocked it over. Good, good job, me. I feel like this. Oh, <laughs> I guess it swivels, which is something I wasn't expecting. Like it swivels. It has a rocker, but also a, a swivel that goes like all the way around. Um, that's pretty crazy. But it also makes it look a little weird there we go let's get it maybe a deeper deeper knee bend come on stand up she's got these platform boots just trying to find that center of gravity so that's a good pose like a high block kind of thing i like that okay we'll we'll leave her over to the side right here and we'll move on so ala sakura is good uh, so far, easily my favorite of the three I've opened, but uh, we'll see what that comes like when we get to the Grand Inquisitor, one of the contentious figures from Obi-Wan Kenobi, mostly because, you know, you have the look you're used to in his debut uh, in Rebels, which is the first thing, and Rebels is very stylized, so you really can't expect to get a one-for-one -one when you go live action, but... Uh, we we did see Utapauans, which is his species, uh, and in episode three, and they had higher head crests. Um, but you know, whatever, it's it's nothing to get super mad at. I feel like, although I feel like this figure has a higher head crest than the actor did, so I don't know. I'm excited to get the Grand Inquisitor. The Rebels version of the Grand Inquisitor was actually on my very first wish list that I ever put out and then he dropped off and I don't know why. Let's read this real quick here. It says Obi-Wan Kenobi is set years after the dramatic events. It's just a uh, it's just a rundown of the show. This is actually what every Obi-Wan Kenobi card says and I, that made sense for those first waves where the show hadn't come out yet but the show's been out for six months like 
you, I feel like you could just put a synopsis of the character at that point. In fact, I mean, this character, you could put a synopsis of this character because he's in other media, you know? It doesn't have to be the Obi-Wan. Like, you could just say something simple, or simple like, he's the head of the Inquisitors and explain who the Inquisitors are or, or something like that. You know, it doesn't have to be crazy or even spoilery for uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You can just actually talk about the Inquisitor. That's one of the things I, I liked about some of those old Power of the Force and stuff, but it came with little cards. That's that's something I feel like a lot of things don't come with now is information. You know, back in the day, you had a little bios on the figures or video games came with instruction manuals. Uh, that was like the first thing I always did when I got a new video game is I would go to the bathroom and take the instruction manual in there with me and, and read it. Um, anyways, I don't want to, that's a weird topic or place for this to, to go. But uh, let's take a look here. Oh, I have to say, uh, I love, I love this cape. I love this cape a lot as a good cape. So his lightsaber, just like the third brother, his lightsaber can fit back here. But unlike the third brother, if it's the fifth brother or third brother? Well, it's fifth brother, third, third sister is the, but unlike the fifth brother, wow. Unlike the fifth brother, they don't have that massive nubbin to fit it in. There's just these little, small little things. I actually think this works a lot better. Uh, I also think that this would be a cool thing for them to do is ignite their lightsaber, have it spinning and just kind of Naruto run through. But I guess if you're running, you have to worry about it spinning and chopping your own arms and legs off. So maybe that's a bad idea now that I think about it. Anyways, the face is great. This is easily one of the best faces I've seen in the Black Series. The paint, the look... All of it, super good. The sculpted lines, love it. The chest and arms, plain. We have a little paint right here. There's a molded little symbol right there. But you know, this, I don't know, like, like what else is he supposed to do? I would have liked this to be maybe a little shinier. This, it feels, since it's just unpainted plastic, it feels a little dull. So I, I would have liked it to be a little glossy. Uh, down here, the belt looks great side armor same same thing at least they match you know these little the shoulders the thighs the the boots they all kind of match which which is good i just would have liked them to be a little glossier but i actually really like this this is actually this is really good so one of the nice things about not having that giant nubbin that the fifth brother has uh is it's, it's you don't have to worry about positioning it so you can't see it. The lightsaber even has some paint. So let's talk about that real quick. Uh, it's got some paint around here, some different coloring. Um, the sucky thing about these double lightsabers, the second sister I have a problem with, the fifth brother I have a problem with, uh, is if they fall, these are very fragile and they tend to bend uh, and that sucks. So got to be careful with that. This is another thing where I, I just wish that we had some alternate hands. Like I would love to have some, like a force hand, like he's doing some force thing. Uh, but instead he just have to pretend with this stupid C-grip cuppy hand. I don't know. But maybe this character is more, he's not really into having crazy poses. He's more into just kind of standing there menacingly watching people act dumb. So maybe that's really more, more his scene anyway. Uh, and this is what I was talking about earlier with those knees. You can see these are new, these are new knees, uh, because they are single jointed and they pivot. Now, when they first started doing this with a lot of figures, I think the first figure to ever do this was Chewbacca. Fun, fun fact, way back in the, uh, very early, like 2014, 2015, but then also Ray did this as well back in 2015. But um, you do you do miss a little bit of that deep bend. But I feel like the trade off where it looks visually a lot more appealing, like the 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 hinge blends into the fabric folds very nicely. But also on a lot of the double the the double joints, you tend to get a lot of warping and bowing. Like all the stormtroopers do that, uh, and it drives me insane. It looks terrible. So you don't have to worry about that with uh, with these figures, and I like that. So 
Um, yeah, Grand Inquisitor. Definitely looking great. Would have loved him to have a, uh, a wired cape, though. And you can't even wire this. You have to, like, sew it if you want to put a wire in. So that sucks. But a wired cape would have really looked nice. So I'm gonna, we're going to put him over here for now. And next, we're going to look at Axe Woves, another from The Mandalorian. He was only in Season 1, um, right? Or No, he was in Season 2. He was just in the, the first episode of Season 2 when they crash land in that water planet with the with the Mon Calamari with the, well, you know, the sweater. Uh, anyways, but then he didn't come back for the end of Season 2, I think, was the difference here. But Axe Woves, I love the blue. Anyways... He was the last figure announced in this wave. Uh, it's a skilled warrior. Axe Woves is loyal to Bo-Katan and is a member of the band of Clan Kree's Mandalorian striking back at the Imperial Remnant. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and pop him open. There's not a lot going on there. We do have the side mural. That, that's the, the Razor Crest, it looks like, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It's fine. Uh, this is based off of the... Death Watch Mando Bonnie, which I haven't officially, as of now, I haven't officially done my top 10 of 2022, but I will say that Death Watch Mando is on it, hands down, not even a question. Where he is on it, I don't know, but but he's on it. I love the Death Watch Mando. Uh, and another thing that I'm looking forward to when they switch everything over. Hold on, I'm trying not to get this out of here while breaking it. There we go. Um, that right there, what I just had to do to get this out, that's something you have to worry about with plastic-free packaging. Like, you know, I know it sucks for people because they want to see their, their toys or whatever, but the way they package the accessories and the package uh, plastic-free packaging is so much better. Um, you don't have to worry about things warping in the trays. You don't have to worry about breaking them, getting them out. Uh, it's just so much better. Anyways, I do like this. It's a nice blue. I feel like I need to heat it up just to kind of stretch this back out because the helmets are always a little squished. Um, so they need to be stretched out. But a little heat usually fixes that. And then we do have the little targeting receptacle that goes up and down, which is nice. So uh, we also have the backpack. And there, there are movable thrusters on the bottom. There's even little spots to plug in jet fire. I don't know why they didn't give us little, little flame effects for these guys. Like, any Mandalorian with a backpack should have a flame effect and a flight stand. I'm just saying that. I know that's a little ridiculous, but I'm standing by it. Anyways, this is a really good likeness to the actor this is a really really nice uh very good likeness i don't remember the actor's name off the top of my head uh we have a little squishy over armor bit let's see if the backpack fits on i know um the death watch mando has an issue but usually if you if you give it a good squeeze here and just kind of go like this you'll feel it kind of push in a little deeper and that's actually pretty good i mean I'm holding it by the backpack. It, that almost fell off when I shook a little harder, but you know, it's not gonna fall off very easily. He comes with a blaster as well. It's the standard kind of Mando, little flat blaster. Uh, it fits in his hand. Like so. His hand, again, moves up and down, which is I, I like better. I like it when, when hands move up and down like that a little bit better uh, than side to side. I feel like side to side is rarely as useful as up and down for a lot of poses. Uh, and being that same figure as before, he's going to have um, butterfly joints and all that stuff. So that's all good. He's got a lot of movement in the head. Look at that crazy movement in the head. So let's get the helmet on. Oh, the helmet's a little loose, actually. But not bad. I'll probably have him on, on my shelf holding his helmet because he's not a crazy zealot <laughs> uh, like Mando is. So, oop, you know, and then, and then it falls out. It's fine. Everything's going according to plan. 
So I'll, I'll probably have him doing something like this. Although I might put the blaster in the holster here uh, because I can. And sometimes I like the way that looks. But uh, yeah, that looks real nice. So we're going to put that back here. Uh, I know this is a little long. Thanks for thanks for hanging out with me while I look at these figures. I've been looking forward to. I got them just a couple days ago as of the recording of this. I'm recording it on Sunday night, uh, and I've been looking forward to opening them up. I'm not even waiting to do uh, a Black Series Cantina. Usually, I wait until I do a Black Series Cantina Fine Editions for these, but I'm not even waiting for that. I really wanted to open these up, and, and I'm doing them all at once because I just I have so many videos to make in December. Uh, and I want to get back into doing video reviews for Black Series figures. Like, I feel like I've been out of the game too long. And I feel like just doing one long video, kind of playing with them real quick, giving my initial thoughts on them, uh, is better than nothing. Uh, so that's where we are. Uh, Migs Mayfeld was absolutely on my uh, must-have want list of 2022. So I'm very glad that we get a season one specifically Mix Mayfeld. And I really want the rest of the squad on this. I love the Prisoner episode. Uh, and I love the Mix Mayfeld character. Bill Burr does a great job. Uh, so hot-headed ex-imperial sharpshooter Mix Mayfeld was once the smart mouth leader of a gang of criminals. So that's, you know, sure, good job. You guys did it, but I mean, better than what they did with like some of the others. So I'm not gonna dog them up too hard, but whoever is writing those, good job. Uh, so let's get him out. Now he comes with a bunch of blasters, which is great. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to bend these. There we go. I push from the back, it looks like they just kind of pop out, which is good. These are all the same blaster, fun fact. There's there's four of these, and then there's one. Gotta be careful with this, there we go. There's one of this Dash Rendar back blaster, and that's the first thing I thought of when I saw it. I was like, that's like the blaster Dash Rendar had. It's a backpack blaster. Although it's a, it's more of a little pistol than his was more of a rifle. Um, but the first thing I thought of when when he was on screen with this thing was, uh, was oh, they, they, they took that from Dash Rendar. First of all, he kind of looks like a G.I. Joe character. And I mean that in the absolute best way possible. Like the webbing all around him looks great. I'm pretty sure this is a 100% new figure. Like we got the new legs new arms uh we got a, a deep cut right there the likeness is fantastic i'm pretty sure this is a different i'm going to post it with a picture of the vorak one but i'm pretty sure this is a different likeness uh this looks more <laughs> more like me than my selfie si series figure does so there's fun you know there's that so let's get this on here the is it going to just the webbing yeah it looks like it just goes into the webbing. There should have been a spot. Oh, there is a spot on his back. Okay. So it goes into the back too. All right. Never mind then. I was wrong. So let's try to get that into the whole the whole thing there. All right. So that's one down. Let's holster all these blasters. That's the first thing I want to do. So we'll put one of these. They look like little German Lugers. <clears throat> we'll put all these into here. They all go into here. So if, if you had all these blasters around, you know, what are the first that you would pull? You know, like if you're going into a fight, do you pull the ones on your hips first, like a cowboy? Do you pull the ones on your chest first, like a, like a, a cop, an undercover detective or something like that? I don't know. Like, I think I would pull the ones on my chest first. You look, let me know down in the down in the in the comments while I'm while I'm trying to get this blaster into this holster. But this. Uh, the whole this holster is different from the other holster. Oh, the blaster is not different from the other blaster. There we go. Okay. So this one actually goes kind of on the front of the leg. This one's more on the side of the leg. I feel like this blaster should be this holster is for a bigger blaster, but they all come with the same blaster. I like the way they look though. He's a little bulky, <laughs> but not bad. And then you know he's got the 
he's got that, which is just kind of fun. You have a little robot arm. There's no, there's a hinge here and there's a hinge here, but nothing up there. So it basically just swings back and stays like this. Um, oops. And then that's going to come off. So yeah, that's the best way to do it is if you want to store it up, it goes like that. I I like this. Like I said, he kind of reminds me of a G.I. Joe. The, the webbing actually hides his torso joint, which is pretty cool. Like if you told me this was low light or something like that, I would believe you. Uh, you put a little beanie on him and some goggles. He's basically low light. Uh, I know low light was, I think it was blonde instead of bald, but we can update his look. Why not? Anyways, so that's Migs Mayfeld. Love him. But this is the one I was looking forward to the most. This right here. I believe he was like, not he wasn't number one on my wish list of 2022, but he was up there on my wish list 2022. And if you've been following my channel, I've done list a list for the top 10 original trilogy figures that you should have in your collection. And I didn't do one for the prequels or Clone Wars or, uh, and, and part of that is because I was waiting. I was waiting to get this. I was waiting to get a, a, a Ayla Sakura because I didn't want to, I didn't want to get one without it. And I didn't read the back of this. I'm so, I was just so excited to get into it. Um, it says, a deadly agile Sith Lord Darth Maul was a formidable warrior and scheming mastermind. He wielded an intimidating double-bladed lightsaber and fought with a menacing ferocity. Uh, now, I love this look. This Season 7 Clone Wars look. This is our first 100% brand new Darth Maul since the original figure in the very first line. Uh, the very first wave of figures back in 2013. The second Darth Maul was the comic one, but that's only half original. The upper torso and the head are original, but the legs are still the same legs from 2013. So uh, since the, since that Maul lost his legs, uh, Hasbro gave us all new legs for this new Maul. And uh, I know a lot of people have actually customized that Darth Maul, like the, the comic one with like, um, uh, what's the, the Q9 and that looked okay, but these, these are all new. These are all new parts. Uh, I love this look so much. I actually bought the hot toys version of it. So, uh, th that's how much I, I want this represented, represented in my collection. Uh, is now I have a six inch version. The, the 3.75 inch version looks pretty good, but I don't really collect those. So I'm not going to buy that. But uh, the, the Hot Toys 1-6 one, one scale looks great. Oh, my goodness. This is worth the wait. So we have butterfly joints here, of course, on both sides. Um, these are attached up here. We have kind of a rubber over a sculpted chest detail, which looks great. We have his uh, big belt. <laughs> That, that connects, his, I guess, his chest to his robot legs down here. And these are all 100% robot legs, and they look fantastic. But that head sculpt, whoo, look at that. Look at that head sculpt. Let me, get, let me get zoomed in here. Oh, yeah, that's a good head sculpt. I like that. So his lightsabers, let's take a look here. His lightsabers are, are not unique. Are they're not um, like his originals where it's just the same piece on both sides. This looks like the original, same original side the original Darth Maul has, but this is a new style. And this is actually exactly like what uh, it should come with. So they did a good job there. That attaches in the middle. We're gonna put him in a badass pose here. Again, I really do wish they gave us different hands. One of the problems with not having just the same kind of hands uh, is you kind of have to fudge what the other hand is doing. You know, that's supposed to look like a fist, but it's not. It's just the other side of his C grip hand there. So he's going to look great on my shelf with the Clone Wars Ahsoka for sure. And he poses so well. Oh, I love this. This is what I wanted. This, oh, I tell you what, figure of the year is going to be tough for me. 
um i'm it's the the hard part is when you're trying to decide you know what what's going to be on your list and i already knew he was going to be on my top 10 list uh, it's one of those things where you can just tell by looking at the promo pictures of him things like that part part of the problem though is like you know is is he on the list because he's new and cool uh like you want to put him at number one because he's your newest figure and it's the you got that uh uh that plastic crack you know it's like the the newness is is there uh but is he really worth it like is he gonna stay there or eventually will you kind of cool on him a little bit and it's it's always kind of sucky when you take your first uh your first initial opinion and just kind of go with it and then that opinion ends up changing um because you didn't give yourself that time to really kind of mull it over and let let that initial rush kind of cool i guess uh, or you know you find other flaws you just don't see right at first that happened with the battle droids uh where i loved them when i first got them but and i did a review on them within a, a couple days of getting them but then after a week or so of having them i was like man this kind of sucks these guys fall over a bunch you know little things like that that you don't realize uh happen anyways these this is what is that? Where are we at? Is this wave 34, 33? I don't know. I don't like that wave numbering. Whoever came up with that wave numbering is wrong. The wave numbering should have started over when the packaging changed. So the, the first wave of that packaging should have been wave one, in which case I think this is like wave 14, maybe even less than that, maybe like 11 or 12. I don't know. The, the wave numbering is all over the place. I, I don't like it, but that's the vernacular people go with. So you say it so people know what you're talking about. This is a good solid wave. There's a couple stinkers and well, there's one stinker in here and then one kind of, yeah, I mean, for the right person, I can see them wanting this. Uh, but, but that aside, like banger, 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 absolute banger. Um, you know, uh, what is that? Five out of seven fantastic figures that anyone should have in their collection even if you don't like obi-wan kenobi show this is a great representation of uh the grand inquisitor slash he's just a cool looking sith dude like you don't even have to like the grand inquisitor or the inquisitors in general you can just be like yeah this is a cool looking sith guy uh ala sakura fantastic random mandalorian why wouldn't you want a, a random a mandalorian dude with a removable helmet migs mayfeld like i said looks like a gi joe character and i think that's great that's something that i want more of in star wars which sounds weird but then of course we have darth maul and you can't go wrong with having darth maul so i feel like those characters uh you know alien 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 two two human dudes that look cool they really belong on people's shelves regardless if you if you like the property and i i kind of want that normalized like back in the day kids used to buy toys because the toys looked cool they didn't necessarily have a cartoon to go with it like it helped but you know when i bought my first ninja turtle i hadn't seen the cartoon i just saw this turtle with an orange bandana that had my name and i'm like okay that looks cool um, there's, there's tons of stuff that I buy just because it looks cool. Hence, I have a moose behind in the back. It's a Mythic Legion. That's not from anything. It's just a cool moose. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you want a moose, you know? I, I want to normalize buying toys just because they look cool. Uh, so like I said, this is a good indication of that. Grogu, I'm, I'm going to have to heat him up to get that head back on. Uh, maybe that's why they didn't include that second head because that head's really hard to get off. And oh, well, it's not hard to get off. It's hard to get back on. And, you know, like I said, uh, Magistrate Grief Karga, he's probably going to peg warm. That sucks. Uh, the first one, I kind of got it because this didn't look like uh, Grief Karga. This one does. But again, you know, he's not really action guy looking like that. So I, I, I kind of get it. But at the same time, I feel like Mando, I feel like you should buy him for your... For your shelf he's an important member and if you're gonna just choose one this one's way better looking than this one anyways that's it that's that's what i got let me know down the downstairs area what you thought of my video do you like videos like this where it's kind of do overviews instead of in-depth you know histories and and 
paint app breakdowns and all that stuff. Uh, I feel like I just kind of blew through seven figures in a little under an hour. Is that something you want? You want a little more long form content? Uh, or do you like them broken up into shorter? Let me know down in the Dallas Series area. I'm mostly doing this because, like I said, I've got a ton of videos to make this month. And uh, this month's going to end before I know it. Christmas is going to be here before I know it. Anyways, <laughs> let me know. Like I said, down downstairs here. I also want to thank these people here for supporting me on Patreon. And a Black Series level or higher. These people pay money to help me out make videos and it means the world to me if you want to join this list you can head to my patreon if you don't that's cool liking sharing subscribing that stuff uh, goes a long way to helping out the channel as well and i am eternally thankful for the people that still watch my videos and smash that like button you know all the weird dumb youtube things that people say you can look out for some more videos for me i'm really trying to get content out now uh whatever break i needed Mentally, I feel like I got and I'm, I'm more motivated than ever to make videos, but I do have to kind of ease back into it. So let me know what your thoughts are. I'm really interested and I will see you later. So thanks for watching and thanks for getting this far. Bye.